More rain is falling on flood-stricken Queensland tonight, disrupting the massive recovery and clean-up operation throughout the state. It's also delaying the return of residents to their homes in the town of Rockhampton, where the Fitzroy River level is expected to fall very slowly during the next week. Further south to the community of St George, where the Weather Bureau is now saying the local Boulogne River isn't likely to rise beyond the predicted 14-metre peak, but Navy helicopters remain on standby for any evacuations. Shortly we'll be crossing to St George for the latest, but first this report from John Taylor. As if there wasn't enough water already, Rockhampton today woke up to more. But after weeks of turmoil, there's a glimmer of light. We've just had an update with the Bureau of Meteorology and uh, to the best of our knowledge, the river has certainly peaked at 9.2. Hard in the mouth sort of stuff because that extra four inches, 100 mils in, in new terms, uh, is, uh, is the difference between having it in your house and having it out of your house for probably 50 people. But Queensland's flood crisis remains unprecedented in its size. More than 40 communities and 200,000 people have been affected. More than 1,000 homes across the state have been inundated, thousands more cut off and two entire communities evacuated. The crisis is so big that every day the Defence Force is being called on for help. A water pump was today moved to the flood-stricken town of Theodore. We're dispatching an uh, army water treatment plant so that we can, in the interim, whilst they repair all the pumps which have been flooded, so that we can uh, essentially provide them with water whilst they need that. Last night, a Black Hawk helicopter flew two children in need to the Rockhampton Hospital. East Timor veteran Major General Mick Slater has been seconded for months to head Queensland's recovery task force. Time is off the essence as we uh, progress down the, the recovery road. However, uh, it's very important that we get it right the first time. If we try and rush in and do patch-up jobs that become temporary fixes that don't help Queenslanders and don't help our communities well into the future, then we will have got it wrong. The Major General's work began in earnest today with the first of many planning meetings he'll take part in. The state government isn't ruling out buying damaged homes in flood-prone areas, but there are a lot of decisions ahead. Please uh, give me all the advice and, um, and hints that you, uh, you think you can manage. For days now, Rockhampton has been the focus of the flood crisis, and in particular, the suburb of Depot Hill, and the people who call it home. I mean, floods, in my experience, or any disasters, hit the poor the most. You know, low socioeconomic base. Uh, they are battlers. They, they're not people who, you know, bludge or anything like that. They're, they're just decent people. It's interesting that the potatoes are the... Rob Schwarten has been the state member for Rockhampton since 1989 and is now Labor's Minister for Public Works. He was born in the city's 1954 flood and knows intimately that the city was built on a floodplain. Whether or not you can flood-proof Rocky, I, I dare anybody to go down to Depot Hill and tell people they can't live there. You won't be able to fight. I go down to the Fitzroy Hotel and sit in that front bar and say, well, we're going to resume all your properties. As I say, you'd want to be able to blow a bit uh, because people love being there. My great-grandparents' house is still standing there that was put there in 1908. So they're, uh, you know, it, of itself, it's, it's a rather complex social issue. It's 24 in each one. I'll take the whole box here. Yeah. 96 to one. When the 7.30 report approached him, the minister was buying chocolate to give to families at the recovery centre. His finances are OK, but he says the flood crisis is going to hinder his government's pledge to get out of debt and restore the state's fallen credit rating. Oh, there's no, no doubt uh, that, you know, as, as the state government takes a massive hammer blow out of this, um, I mean, the, the capacity for the state government to assist uh, and to try and get our AAA rating back, I think you can kiss goodbye, quite frankly. And all of the economic indicators around that, I mean, the coal, for example, that's, uh, that's a $100 million a day industry, of which the state government gets about $7 million, so everybody suffers from that. Authorities believe that the worst is over for flood-weary Rockhampton. And now there are lighter moments. 
Macau was located on North Keppel Island. It was alive and well, and they believe it's come actually from Rockhampton. So it's a 20-minute boat journey, and uh, that's a long swim in anybody's uh, book. Last week, the rural town of Theodore, with a population of around 600, became the first town in Queensland history to be entirely evacuated. Yeah, yeah the town's bugging. I used to own engineering work, but there's nothing much there now. We didn't ever think that it would come to this. We thought that we would be able to, um, what do I say, live it out and, and, you know, find higher ground within the town. We didn't think we'd have to move out like this. Theodore residents have begun returning and a fresh contingent of Victorian State Emergency Service workers stopped in Brisbane today before arriving there tomorrow. It's going to be tough because a lot of these people uh, have experienced great trauma, uh, but I can assure you um, they're very resilient, very stoic, uh, very brave, uh, but also supporting each other. So any support uh, from you, fellow, you guys uh, will be gratefully appreciated. Their job is to try and help restore property and lives. And obviously we've been told about the devastation and we've recently experienced floods ourselves and um, severe um, incidents such as Black Sat Day um, a couple of years ago. So we're, we're unfortunately used to it and um, we'll deal with what, what um, comes our way. We do know it's certainly going to be very hot, arduous work. It's going to be a high level of emotion, no doubt, with the uh, residents as they return back into Theodore. And uh, we're just grateful to be here to be able to return the favour to Queensland because we've had the assistance from Queensland in the past down south. John Taylor with that report.